Hello everyone and welcome back to Do Yourself. Uh, on this episode we're going to be working on a car. We're not going to be doing any home improvements. Uh, the car that you see in the back, it's uh, it's my um, 2014 Corvette. I was gone for almost two years and I put it on an operating status. Now that I got back, I'm trying to um, start using the car again and get it registered. The problem that I'm having right now is that uh, as soon as I turned the car on, the check engine came on. And uh, I just want to show you a tool that I ordered online so I could check the en engine uh, check engine uh, code. As I said, the car is not registered, so uh, some people can just drive it to the closest uh, auto shop, like uh, like any uh, auto shop where they sell uh, car parts like AutoZone or O'Reilly's. And usually you can have them... Um, they'll let you borrow the scanner and you can plug it in and you can read the code since i have a few cars and i like to do it myself i just uh and and i can i'm not supposed to drive the car right now i decided to just buy a little tool that was like 20 dollars online and it connects to your phone it'll allow you to read the code so this is the tool that i bought it's in uh obd to Wi-Fi adapter, it works for Android and uh, iPhone. And this adapter needs an app as well. It's it's uh, called Beep 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 Peak, and uh, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna plug it into the car, and then I'm gonna show you how it works. So I plugged in the sensor, and um. Once it's plugged in, in the car, now you have to turn on the car. You don't have to start the engine, but um, you do have to make sure the, usually this is a uh, push button, but uh, if you have a key, it'll be, usually you have to, uh, one click up, uh, turns on the lights, second uh, click will turn on the, um, the computer on the car, and then you start the car. So you have to have it at least on the second click. For us, it'll be when we have the uh, green light here. That's when we know it's working. So now we have the green light. The car's started. There's the uh, check engine light stayed on. And now we're gonna connect to the, to the reader, ODB reader, and see what the problem is. Okay, so here's the uh, car scanner app. You click on it, and uh, it's gonna ask you to ask later. And we click connect. I believe the way the device works, it connects to my personal home router. And then from there, uh, my phone connects to the router and that's how we interact. I noticed that uh, usually if I just connect straight to it directly, it works better. So I'm gonna wait for it to populate Wi-Fi OBD2 connecting. Now I'm connected and connect and now it should work i believe the reason why you can um it should connect to the internet and then you connect to the internet and that's how you communicate with it it allows you to once you find the problem you can search for it online and uh we can always disconnect and do that afterwards so we're going to click where it says diagnostic travel codes and it tells you all the things that you can run you can check the transmission engine control unit um a B ABS, H back, parking brake. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna read the codes. And as you can see, uh, it's Papa one two Foxtrot Charlie, and then we have Papa two six Charlie eight. So those are the, my two main issues why my check engine's on. And then now that I have that, if I were connected to the internet, it allows you to just click on it 
and it'll do a, a search on it. But since we're connected to the reader, it won't let me do it. Also, you can go back here and you can clear if you want to. So it will clear the, the palm. And um, I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to try to actually fix it instead of just clearing the problem. So let's try to research what the problem is and find out what we can do to fix it. Okay, I looked up the code and the um, main one was Papa12, um, Charlie, I think something like that. And then that code was um, essentially saying that the right ex exhaust valve, it's defective. So if you look at the diagram here, there's a, there's a valve right here, the actuator, number 12, and then there before the exhaust. So there's the left one and then the right one. They're $200 each. And then after the exhaust, there's this other valve. Okay, so if you can see right here, this is the uh, the valve. And there's usually one before and one after. And they're about $200 each. So I need to replace this valve right, actuator right here. What it does, it opens the valve and it closes it. Mine, the code says that it's stuck on the open position and that's why I have to fix it. Uh, here you can see it a little bit better. So here's the valve after, right here. And then here's the valve before. So mine, according to the code, it's on the right side. So this one is defective on mine. So in order for me to fix this, I'm going to have to take the whole exhaust off out so I can work on it so I can take just this little piece out because there's no room in there to do it with the exhaust install so I'll have to hook it from here and take the whole thing out in order to take the exhaust out I'm gonna have to take the, the rear bumper so this area right here I'm gonna have to take it out everything that way I can have access to the exhaust and take the whole thing out so I'll show you the things I need to do and then I'll get started. So I'm gonna have to take all this out, this, this, and then underneath the car, there's some metal plate. You can see it, that's the metal plate right there. So I'm gonna have to take that out and that's where the union for the, for the exhaust is. And then there's a bunch of brackets that I'm gonna have to disconnect. Uh, it looks pretty brand new down here. Now, even though it's a 2014 car, it only has 10,000 miles on it, so it's fairly new. So I'll take all that apart, work my way out, disconnect everything, and let me see if I can show you the exhaust from here. You can see how hard it is to even get to it. Yeah, you can't even see it, but it's it's somewhere behind this bracket. I'll show you the yeah, yeah, it's behind that bracket, so it's it's impossible to reach it. All right, um, the bumper's out. It was actually pretty easy to take it out. It wasn't that bad. As you can see, there's a few screws there, uh, two there, two more on that side, and there was a bunch down here, and other than that, it just came off. Uh, it was pretty easy, not too bad. I honestly thought it was going to be a lot harder. And as you can see, here's our actuator. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this one, this one works perfectly. There's the valve right there, I don't know if you can see it. It's open right now at the moment. And then there's this one, it is it is open as well. And then there's the actuator right here, which there's nothing wrong with this one. The problem is the one that's on the other side of here, which we can still not even get, see from here, somewhere down there. So we gotta take this whole thing now just to get to it. And that's the next step.
Okay, um, it's uh, I already took the sauce out, and uh, it wasn't that bad at all. Uh, if you just want to take one side out, literally it's two screws right there. Um, this one that's holding it, the bracket that's holding the the exhaust, and then another screw on the other side. So technically, one, two, three, four screws, and you can take one side out. If you want to do both sides, then you got to do one more here and one on the other side. There's uh, the... The bracket that's holding on the exhaust since my problem is the actuator I only needed to take one side and it got to a point where once I brought it down here I didn't even have to take the whole thing out I could have just fixed it from there and replace the actuator um, I didn't do it because uh, I want to show you the uh, how it looks and uh, it will probably be easy to record so here's the exhaust there's the bracket there's the actuator that's bad, and then there's the other actuator that actually works. And let's see from this angle if we can see the, the valve open. You can see it right there, it's open. But that's that one's working perfectly. It closes, opens. This one's the one that according to the code, it says it's stuck in the open position. So now I'm gonna take it out. It takes three screws. And I was, from what I, the research I was doing online, it says it's spring loaded, so when I take it, I gotta be careful because it's gonna, uh, it's gonna probably um, try to uh, pop the cover out. And um, that's it. I'm gonna open it right now and, and see if there's if this the electric part actually doesn't work and that's why it's not opening, or maybe inside there the the mechanical parts are stuck and that's why it's not opening. Here's the actuator. I already took it out. And um, I wanted to make sure that it, this part was de uh, defective before I um, bought a new one. And I placed it on the, um, this, the, the car has four actuators. So I placed it somewhere else to make sure it, it wasn't working. And in fact, it will stay on. So this thing will stay like that, open. And it wouldn't close. So it would just stay like this. So uh, I had to replace it. Um, I went to the, I, I called the dealership and I looked up online. And it was actually cheaper to buy it online. But I was going to have to wait almost two weeks to get it delivered. And then plus the shipping. And the dealership had it for almost $100 more expensive. But um, I didn't want to wait so I just, I just bought it. So this is the new one and now we're gonna put everything back together. So we're gonna install it back to inside the, back in the exhaust. I took both of them out to test them. And now I'm gonna put everything back together. Okay, so the exhaust, it's back on. There's the actuator. And then there's the other actuator and then the other ones are inside. You can't see them from here. So before I put the bumper back on, I just want to make sure it's it's fixed, it's good to go. So now I'm just going to go to the front of the car and make sure that the check engine light doesn't come on again. So uh, check engine light didn't come on, it's in touring. I'm gonna switch it to sport where it opens the valves. I'm gonna switch it back to track, I mean uh, touring, back to sport, and back to touring, back to sport. And the check line did not come on. So we can say it's good to go. Turn it off now. Okay, we're all done. The whole project itself took approximately, I want to say maybe three hours. Uh, the most consuming thing for me was um, when I was trying to take the exhaust out, which I didn't really even have to take the whole thing out. 
my car was not high enough where I could um, bend over the exhaust and take it out. I was getting stuck. If I had like a platform, it would have been a lot easier to take it out. So that, that was one of the things that was time consuming. So if you're ever replacing your exhaust, the whole thing, the higher the better. It'll make it easier on, uh, when you take it out. It's still doable. Also, if you take the bolts in between the two exhausts, it'll make it a lot easier too. Uh, the metal plate that is covers the exhaust, I did not have to take that one out. The splitters passed the metal plate, so I didn't even have to take it out, which made it a lot easier. Uh, the car's back on, everything's good. I tested, I took it for a test drive, check engine did not come on. Unfortunately, uh, the I want to take it to get the smog test and it's already closed. So I'm going to have to wait until Monday to do it. Well, thank you for watching and have a great day.